Hi everyone, this is Board Games Bourbon. I'm Glenn Flair, and you're right now I want to tell you about Pie Town, which is a dice as worker placement game with a bunch of other cool mechanisms in it. And this video, I'm making it for the Euro Game Group because I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's been overlooked, and I think it's a good one to turn your attention to. I actually want to uh, kind of blow all the other reviews out of the water because I don't think they really talked about the merits of the game and all the things you can do that I don't think they realized in the past. So in this game, what's going to happen is every player is going to have their own little tableau. Their little area here, whatever you want to call it, their little player board, is going to have a bunch of different rooms on it. You're going to have a room that's called the break room. And in this break room, you're going to have dice that serve as your workers. And they're going to have different levels on them. You start at a level one, but you can get yourself all the way up to level six. Okay, they're going to go up and down. Technically, when we start the game, you're going to start with one worker that says three and one that says two. And they're going to start there. What you're going to do through here is you're going to place them around the board. Some are going to elevate the level of your worker. Some are going to downgrade the level of your worker, but they all do different things. You can go hire another worker to come to your board, so now you have three in the future. You can upgrade, go here to upgrade, and now you can unlock abilities on your board. Uh, you can bake more pies, which is a big aspect of getting points in the game. You can get... Uh, a change in the amount of points you get when you bake pies. You can store more resources so that you can therefore make more pies. You can do that all on your board. You can also go over here to what's called the orchard. And when you go to the orchard, two things are going to happen. One, whatever the number of the die is that you put down, in this case three, you can grab that many ingredients from the orchard and bring it back to your personal area. When your worker comes back, they're going to go up a level. So this says three, but when it comes back, it's going to be a level four. When it goes uh, over here, what you're doing is you're going to place a worker, it bakes a pie. The different pies we can bake, there's actually four different pies, and that's one of the cool parts about this game that's going to come in. When we look at this board, okay, uh, some of the recipes we're going to do, and I'm going to put the autofocus on here for a moment here, and I'm going to bring this, it's going to put us a little square, but that's okay for now. The most common ingredients in the game are apples. So if we look at this board, there's just a ton of apples on here. There's apples, there's bananas and strawberries and pumpkins. The apples are the most common, so they're called common. The rare ones are going to be the strawberries, the bananas, and the pumpkins. If you make a pie, meaning you have resources over here and you decide to bake, because I have a number four worker in my bake area, it means I can make up to four pies at one time. If I bake something with three apples, I'm going to get two points eventually. If I go over here and use two apples and one special ingredient, I'm going to get three. If I get one apple and I use two special ingredients, I can eventually get four. And then there's something called the secret recipe, and that's a really cool idea here. When we start the game, we're going to have our own separate special recipes. Is it going to be one, uh, one rare item and two commons? For the purple player, they have two green apples and one strawberry. And for the green person, they have a green, a red, and a pumpkin. And that's their special thing. When you bake that, you will get seven points. But here's the rub. The other person, anyone you're playing against, can figure out your recipe and steal it and start making your recipe as well and getting seven points. So it really gives them a lot of flexibility. Now, typically, these items are in this box, so people aren't going to see what you're doing, okay? Okay. And uh, what's going to happen is you need to spy on the other person. And that's really going to open up the board. The way you're going to spy on other people is you're going to put down a two. Okay, let's say you're doing some random function either here in the place where you sell the pies or over here where you gain resources. When you put down a two, if I put something above you that it has a higher number, like a four, that means the difference between four and two not only is a difference of two, it means I can look at two of your items randomly. Okay, you don't get to decide, I get to know what they are. Two items. And I write this down on this little placard here. So eventually I can figure out your recipe. But not only does that happen, when I'm on top of you in any given space, I get to take the action of that space as well. That's my benefit. So you, it's really a two for one. Now, normally when you do that, you're not going to upgrade if you're over here. But here's the crazy thing. If you're in the orchard and you upgrade, you're still going to come back with a higher level on your spy die. So you're not only stealing recipes, you're getting resources, you're, you're making your ability to score more flexible by knowing more information. All right.
When we come over here, what's going to happen is this is the board that scores the track. You have the tracker. This has the rounds. There's going to be nine. Then the pie convention. Uh, if you are a player one and then you go here, you can become player one again by going here and you can upgrade your worker. Or if you're really stuck, you can go over here. You can lose one level to your worker and you can change your recipe. Now, you might change your recipe to prevent your opponent from scoring, or you might see what's out here in the orchard, change your recipe to match that so you can grab ingredients, bring it back here, and then score that seven pointer over and over and over and over. Okay, now specifically, what can you do here? Break down this player area. Uh, if I go to the upgrade, I can upgrade my storage, I can upgrade it from eight items held to 14. I can go to the kitchen, and every time I bake a pie, uh, like if I go here and I say, I'm gonna bake one pie, I'm gonna turn in three apples turn in three apples, I put down one of my pies in this row here, okay? Regardless of where I put it, I'm gonna score one point. But if I upgrade it, I'll start getting two points, okay? That's one of the upgrades. The storage was the other, and the last one you can do is bake. You can unlock this, and so now you have two bake areas. You also get a up to your level here when you go here. That's important because sometimes you can clear out rows and columns and stuff like that. On this board here, in a two-player game, you can either sell a column of items. So you probably want to sell wherever you are. You can sell all the number two pies, threes, fours, or sevens. I can go over here, sell the bottom like that. It's just clearing this out over and over. Sometimes you're going to do that to trigger something. Now, remember, if I had a six, anything above a two, I can go there and I can trigger it again. Plus, I can steal information, right? In a three-player game, I have two columns. In a four-player game, I'm going to have two columns, and I'm going to have two bottom rows I can trigger. And that's basically the game back and forth. It plays pretty briskly. There's a lot of good decisions. None of it's too heavy. Unfortunately, this game uh, got a bad reputation. I really think that's because the you know taste makers out there uh, gave it a bad review. The biggest complaint I saw a lot of people say was that the choices get tighter as the game goes on, but I don't think that's true at all. I think the gameplay evolves halfway through the game and what you need to start doing whereas in the first half maybe what you're doing is you're building up your number of workers you're going to the higher action uh, if i put like a level five worker here that will earn me a free worker you start with two work two dice total but you can have up to four on the board but the thing is when you gain this worker this is going to lose two levels this five is going to become three and you're going to do that kind of action in the first half of the game. You're building up your upgrades, you're getting your resources, you're, you're getting your extra workers. But as the game goes on, what you start to do is you start to do the spy action. Okay, you're, you're doubling down. You're not only learning about them because now things, time's getting tight. Your resources are getting scattered. You're figuring out other ways to get resources. When you uh, sell a pie, not when you bake a pie on your board, but when you go here to sell a pie, you not only sell what's there, you're going to get two free ingredients. That's pretty important, especially if that board is all dried up. You know. Now, how does the board work? Well, if I take a number five worker and I send it out here to the orchard to take things, what that means is from all those connected hexes, I get to grab five items total. Every one of these hexes is going to have two things. Now, in my case, my recipe here is a red, a green apple, and a, and a uh, pumpkin here. So what would I want to do? Well, do, is there a pumpkin anywhere on that board? I don't really see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to go up here. It's the only place I see a green apple. So I'm going to go right there. I'm going to grab one green apple because I need it for my special recipe. I'm going to grab one red apple because I need it for my recipe. But I have three others. So I'm probably going to take all of the specialty items all the rares and i put it here now my storage is a max of eight which means in the future i'd be wasting a die if i went there okay if i used another five again i can only hold eight i already have five it means i have to throw two away that's a waste when i return from here i get a plus level so this five is going to become a six that sounds great it sounds great to go here in the future and grab six items but i'm wasting my upgrades i should really send maybe a two because the two could benefit from upgrade and become stronger so there's a lot of just back and forth but if i send a two maybe someone's going to come over here with a three put it on top of me not only are is the three going to get three resources, but now they get to look at one of my ingredients and they have more flexibility with scoring. So there's a ton going on. Anyway, I'm not going to do a playthrough at the moment, but that's a taste of the game and why I really enjoy it. I would recommend you get it, you know, um, at least try it. See if you can buy it used. Okay. So that is Pie Town. If you have questions now, this wasn't a rule video. Okay. Oh, I forgot. I had that auto, uh, 
zoom on there. Uh, it's not a rule video, but that's just kind of like a flavor of it. But if you do have questions, I'll have some clarifications and stuff at another time. So until then, friends, thank you so much. Have fun. Talk to you soon. Bye.